What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we got another two-in-one Pandora's box and a Raspberry Pi in a single control panel. Solid. <laughs> What's going on guys? It's keeping busy in the shop. I got a bunch of stuff going on. I even do have a hidden, I'll kind of try to flash it real quick. You might not see it, but you really have to look carefully. But if you did follow me on Instagram, you would have seen the secret cabinet. I am right now in the works. I have a couple of things. I got two things in the mail. I got one more thing I'm waiting for. Oh, it's gonna be a good cabinet. It's gonna be a great cabinet. It's gonna. Again, if you follow me on Instagram at Vic underscore VP, you would have seen the sneak peek. It was literally about like a five second boomerang. Uh, and I actually posted a picture of what I just kind of flashed. If you didn't catch it, you missed out on Instagram. But super excited because that's gonna be a personal build, but I'm very sure I'm gonna get a lot of hits on that build. Still got a bunch of four player going on. Comic book store right now, we're in a little bit of a hang up. We're getting artwork all situated. Um, it's two partners, awesome guys, great guys. Luckily, they're not in a rush. Uh, I sent them artwork. Uh, one partner loved it. Another partner didn't want like one of the sides. So there's a little bit of back and forth going on. So that really should be done. But I am cutting another one. That's gonna be my personal one. And I have another one going out to a customer. And I have to cut a Konami cabinet. There's gonna be a lot. This is spring break now. My wife will be home watching the baby and I'll be able to really put work in the garage and. I'll probably be in here for the whole week. Um, but enough of that. Let's focus on what we're working with today. Again, today I got somebody from TJ out of Instagram. Message on Instagram is coming all the way from LA. Hit me up. He goes, hey Vic, I got a Pandora's box. I got a Raspberry Pi lying around. What can we do? I saw this video that you did for Eugene with like a two-in-one. Can we do it? And I said, obviously, yes, I did it before. Let's do it again. So we do have TJ's two-in-one Pandora's box and Raspberry Pi in one control panel. We're gonna go in depth. I'll give you a whole bunch of stuff. We'll look more deeper at it. Uh, and it's pretty cool. Now, real quick off the bat, looking at the control panel, you might say to yourself, whoa, Vic, this looks kind of familiar. Yes, this is a Game Room Solutions control panel. Um, I'm gonna discuss what happened with this panel. All good, obviously they do make good on, on my end, um, but I was kind of delayed about four or five days. It should have really been sent out. It should have really been like a three or four day project and sent out, but I was about a week into it. Um, I don't wanna say it because I do, again, don't wanna to rely too much on Game Room Solutions. This is a Game Room Solutions control panel and I'll tell you why I use Game Room Solutions for this specific control panel. Number one was to keep the cost down and number two, not to mention the price that they charge for this control panel. It's a good price compared to me buying a four by eight sheet of wood, cutting it, CNCing it, getting Gulf Coast details involved as far as the artwork. There's a lot going on, but I can't lie. GRS, this control panel, the cost of it, you can't really beat the price on it. That's why I went with the Game Room Solutions control panel. Now, again, a little bit of a mix up, a little bit of hang up. Um, they now have two different variations of this control panel. You got the one big boy. This is the big one. Then they have the one that I used previously, which was the small one. And you might realize what happened and uh, you know why the little mix up. Basically, Game Room Solutions said, hey Vic, we have some new workers. And they sent me the control panel correct size, but they sent me the base to the smaller panel. A little bit of a mix up back and forth and they finally gave me back the correct base. Again, I'll show you real quick. I'll get out of software mode. You guys don't like software mode. I haven't done software mode in a while. Got a little bit excited because there's a lot going on, but let's bring you guys down. Let's talk a little bit of GRS. We'll take a look, closer look at the whole cabinet. We'll do everything. You know how I do. So now like I said, I ordered it from them. Uh, again, control panel came. It was a good size to it. And then once I built this, obviously I built the base first. I put the control panel here getting ready to put the hinges on it. And I'm like, whoa, these holes don't line up. And then I realized the kind of depth on this. I was like, wait, the base isn't right on this. So I hit them up within about a day. They sent it out. They, they basically fixed it, sent it out. And now I'm good to go. So the big thing to kind of note is that going back on my videos, you see the Eugene two in one. I put everything that's in here. I put it in here. The game of solutions didn't have a bigger panel option. So essentially this is the one that Eugene has. 
And it's just kind of cool to see like how I was able to put what's here into here. But I do remember that when I did Eugene's build, I do remember like it was tight. The biggest ordeal was basically when it came to the outlets, being sure that you could close the control panel and you're not on the outlets itself. So when I was looking at it, I was like, you know, there are two different prices. I think this one's like $60 more, which honestly I think it is well worth it. It's more sturdy, it's heavier. I would definitely suggest paying the extra couple of bucks on it. That's what I did for this customer, TJ. I wasn't gonna go cheap on it. I went with the bigger panel. So I also went with the bigger panel because I remember the headache I had when I built Eugene's two-in-one. So all in all, pretty well, pretty good. Put the LED underglow on it as always. This way it does shine. And it looks good, it's awesome. LEDs always go crazy with it. Uh, TJ did have a couple of main requests. He requested the actual artwork. Um, great kind of combination. It's kind of like uh, Marvel versus Capcom 2 style, but with other characters on it. He wanted LED buttons on it and the whole basics. This is basics to me. So pretty cool. Again, all in all, I'll take you guys closer. We'll take a look at it. This is running a Raspberry Pi and a Pandora's box, which he had. Again, going back on how this whole story came about, he said to me, hey Vic, listen, I have a Pandora's box and I have a uh, Raspberry Pi and I'll actually show you what he had as far as the Raspberry Pi. It started with the Pandora's box. He goes, Vic, I have a Pandora's box. He bought basically the ones where I told you you could buy a control panel and then gut it. He bought one of those on eBay. He's like, Vic, I don't like the buttons on it. I don't like the joysticks on it. I said, yeah, that's kind of what you get with the you know, China control boards. Um, the only main thing about those is the actual heart of it, which is the actual PCB board. Um, so he said, hey, what can we do? Then again, like I said, he found the video with the two-in-one for Eugene, and we're back to why this video is being made. So again, awesome TJ looking back at the videos, and I'm pretty sure he's gonna like how this turned out. So now again, he had the Pandora's box. It's basically like what I always have in my videos where I tell you that you could, you know, gut it and swap it. And he had this. Never seen this before, it's a Crow Pie. It's like a suitcase with a screen on it. Very interesting, he had this lying around. He said, Vic, it's collecting dust, it's not doing anything. Uh, I was like, listen, I, what pie is in it? He said, it's a 3B plus. And basically, we, I have my 3B plus image and it was able to work. So this is pretty cool. It's pretty nifty. It's literally a suitcase. Let me put this down. It's a suitcase that has a screen attached to it. It's almost like my game case, but it's not really meant for gaming. This is meant for like, I guess, Raspberry Pi stuff, fiddling around, figuring out the buttons, coding, I would probably say for. Pretty cool with this. I believe it's also a touch screen. But the, the Raspberry Pi was basically here. I took the four screws out and this is going back to him. I don't have any use for this. It goes right back to him. It was just kind of cool that he had this lying around and uh, we were able to use it. So now real quick, I'm jumping in on this video because I just shot it. I know it's very random. Uh, I just shot the video. I forgot to bring this up. It is unbelievable at this time right now, the date 2020, tomorrow's Easter. It is so bizarre, the pricing on Pandora's boxes and on Raspberry Pis. Again, there, I understand there's a chip shortage going on or something like that, but pricing has, I would say, doubled with everything. Again, you're gonna see, I'm gonna talk about my Pandora's box that I usually get from my company. I literally reached out to them, they doubled their price. Raspberry Pis too, doubled in price. It's, it's kind of crazy, I did unfortunately have to up my price for arcade builds a little bit, nothing drastic a little bit just to cover the cost on Pandora's boxes and Raspberry Pis. Again, Pandora's box was the cheapest, like price-wise, hardware-wise, the cost of it was the cheapest route. And now, sadly, the, the Pandora's box costs this almost a little bit more or the same as a Raspberry Pi. It's, keep, let that like sink in for a minute. That's, that's, it's crazy. A lot of people now in the Facebook groups that I'm in, they're going to PC builds, they're going to Dell Optiplex route. They even do now the whole Android boxes. Um, I personally won't be looking at that. Some people now do Batasara builds. I personally, I'm good with these three and Hyperspin. So one, two, and Hyperspin. Those are my main go-tos. But you never know, maybe in the future I'll shoot myself in the foot and I'll probably wind up getting into this Android box. But it's just insane. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Everything's going up. So now for the people that haven't seen Eugene's 2-in-1, I mean, I'm talking maybe it's like, what, two years ago. 
Um, I'll give you a quick rundown on what it is. Again, there is two kind of systems hearts in this. One side is the Pandora's box. You'll know if you see my videos about the Pandora's boxes. And on the other side is a Raspberry Pi. So we got 8,000 games and 15,000 games on the Raspberry Pi. Basically, it's one control panel, controls both systems. There's no need to swap any internals or wiring. The only thing is basically that there's two buttons in the back along with two HDMI and USB ports in the rear. So if you are right now, I have the Pandora's box on. All you gotta do is put the Pandora's box on and you're set. I just turned it off, but that's a-okay. On the right side here, I should say the left, my right, your left, this is the Raspberry Pi. So if you want to play the Raspberry Pi, I normally suggest you first take your HDMI, you put the HDMI port in and you power on the Pi. That is it. That's all you have to do. So whether you're bouncing from Pandora's box to Raspberry Pi, you simply push the button. So we're not using the Raspberry Pi anymore. I could hit this button off and we're back to the Raspberry Pi. Again, basically whatever HDMI you're in, that'll be what system it is. Obviously power button for left side is Raspberry Pi. So you wanna make sure this is on, HDMI on the left. Right side, Pandora's box, HDMI here. Now real quick, let me tell you about a little thing that I noticed with his Pandora's box. He does have a Pandora's box 18S Wi-Fi RRHS. I opened it up. It did look a little bit different than the one that I usually use. Big thing I did notice that it didn't have a fan. Usually my Pandora's boxes have fans on it. This one had a very big heat sink. Um, the only thing I did realize, and it's kind of unique to his setup, um, I basically had to do some very special wiring so that the Pandora's box doesn't turn on when the Raspberry Pi turns on, uh, but basically all in all to basically make it quick, um, you have to actually leave this button on. Something very weird happens where if I turn off this button, which again, I basically have this button set to the five volts and ground, that's all it is because it's gonna power on the system. This specific Pandora's box, when you have the actual power brick connected, the Pandora's box has power no matter what. So the system is always on. Basically this button disables the actual joystick. So even with me pushing this on and off, the actual Pandora's box system is on. It's just more about, it's off right now, joystick doesn't work. If I put it in, joystick works. But what's very weird is that if I do have this off on the, on the Raspberry Pi side, the joysticks are like jumbled. It's like up and down are being pressed at the same time along with A and D. So like I'm trying to, you know, when I was setting up the configurations for the controls, it was going haywire. So for TJ specific instance, honestly, this is just gonna stay on. Kind of defeats the purpose of having a button, but I didn't realize that until after I modified it and everything. He's just gonna have to leave this button on. I'll probably show you on video what I mean, why it does it. I don't really know why it does it. Again, it is a different Pandora's box than what I'm usually used to. The Pandora's box that I'm usually used to, if you look at the control panels, there is an actual physical switch in the back that will power it on and off. His specifically, even if you hit that power switch on or off, the Pandora's box still booted. Very odd, it was very, very weird. But that's the only kind of minor hiccup on it. At least the main thing though is the Raspberry Pi does work. In all honesty, really, when you are in the Raspberry Pi, you are still technically controlling the Pandora's box. But you can't really break a Pandora's box. You can button mesh the hell out of this. You can't break it. You can't erase things. If anything, you're going into the PSP game, which is honestly the first 100 games on a, on a Pandora's box. You're just in a PSP game. You're just randomly pressing buttons. So it's nothing major to worry about. It's just kind of weird. Like I said I spent about a day trying to figure out what the hell happened. And then I concluded that either something with the 5 volts or the ground, very odd, but again, he's basically just gonna have to leave that Pandora's box button in. Right now, I do have the Raspberry Pi on, so I'll just put my HDMI to the Raspberry Pi. Let me move my control panel over, because I put the cord underneath that. And as you can see, we do have Raspberry Pi action. So again, if, I might be able to do it real quick. Again, Pandora's box is always powered. If I put it on this side here, you're gonna get the Pandora's box. Boom. There you go. So again, what's very odd is that if I put this on or off, it doesn't power off the actual system. I don't have the button in right now. So if I insert a coin 
you can see there's nothing going on. If I push the button in and I insert a coin, I do get action. So it worked, but then it made my Raspberry Pi spaz out and I was like, nope, we're just gonna have to leave that on all the time. All right, so now real quick, because I'm talking about it, I'm gonna try to activate it. Again, customers supply me this Pandora's box and I did notice something different, but I do actually have a Pandora's box on hand for the comic book one, four player action. Um, I'm thinking about, I will open it and we'll try to compare it because the company I got it from, they sent me the 8,000 game one, which is, I, I haven't opened it yet, but he has the 8,000 game one, so I'm gonna see, maybe we can see a difference on it. Um, so right now, I'm in the Raspberry Pi right now, I'll put in a couple of coins. Uh, I do have the button active, so it's gonna be regular gameplay. So right now, the Pandora's box switch is active, and you're gonna see gameplay will be normal, and then I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna basically take the, I'm gonna push the button, and deactivate Pandora's box, and you're gonna see a little bit of a spaz out. So again, with the button active, I have no issues at all. I can move my players left and right, up and down. Nothing at all. There's nothing out of the ordinary on this. It's normal. If I take away the button, so it's off right now, even sometimes if I was playing like with, see like that, I was going up and it went to the left up. I know it's, it's there, there it is again. Let's see if I can do anything with player one. Again, see like that, I'm pushing a button. I was pushing punch and it's, it's he's like flipping forward. Not to mention like once or twice, if I was moving the player two, there, see like I didn't even move the joystick on that and he like jumped. See, I actually went right and he went back left. Very odd, like I said, it's, 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 it's very weird. Not to mention that on player two, sometimes when I was walking, it would act, yeah, see, I'm like, I'm holding left, and it went forward. Very odd. Like I said, it's, it's, it's just odd. You might have to slow it down on the video, but now that I have it active, it won't, it won't be, it won't, it won't do that. Definitely when you're in tense battles. Basically, on this specific one, for TJ, you're going to have to just leave the Pandora's box button on the entire time. I originally wanted to start this video talking about the Pandora's box, and then go into Raspberry Pi, but I have the Pi on. I would rather talk about the Pi right now, turn off, shut down the Pi properly, and then we'll go back to the Pandora's box and all that. So, uh, it's your basic Raspberry Pi, pays, uh, pays, plays 15,000 games. I'm also thinking about how many times I'm gonna mix up the Pi and the Pandora's box and, yeah. So, it does play your 15,000 games. He did send me a couple of games. He's like, Vic, these games must work. Um, so, one of them was uh, Afterburner 2. He's like, Vic, I have to make, you have to make sure that works. I do always have it working. I basically had to make sure that it does work with the joysticks. Um, so that was pretty cool. We'll launch Afterburner and all that. Again, 15,000 games are basic stuff. He did have at his house PS3 controllers. He did have real PS3 controllers. I'll clean them up before they go. It's a little, uh, it's a little dirty, but it's a-okay. It's fine. They are used. Granted, it's his. Um, so I'll clean these up, but these do talk to the Raspberry Pi, so it's pretty cool. You could do four-player action with the PS3 controllers, and they are wireless. That's a great, great, great thing. So now, I do have the volume off on, on uh, Afterburner, on the TV, I should say. If I could find my remote, put some volume on. Don't press the mute twice. Again, I basically have this set up to the joystick. Basically, three buttons. You have your fire, you have your missiles, and then you have like this speed burst. And as you can see, I'm able to go up and down, left and right. Oh, cool. Hotkey exit, you do have load safe state, obviously. All good. Um, basics, honestly, that's the Raspberry Pi. Big thing now, um, I did learn, and I went into the coding as far as the track mode. Basically, way back on my videos, I taught you how to exit properly, which is go into a track mode and see the nerd and press shutdown. But I actually did figure out coding. You could actually just keep pressing back, exit a track mode, yes and then the system will power it down. It's a whole sudo thing. Um, so Raspberry Pi is now off. I would, post, I would probably still suggest that you do go the nerd route, go to a track mode and turn up with the nerd. But right now, Raspberry Pi is off. Again, you've seen my videos with Raspberry Pi. I'm not gonna talk too much about it. Let's go to the left, so I'm swapping HDMIs and we are now gonna get the Pandora's box. As you can see, Pandora's box, cause the buttons are active, I'm in a random game, it's a-okay, we're gonna hold down start and exit the game. Awesome.
That's it. As you can see, a couple of coins went in. Easy stuff. So he does have 801 pages at two, four, six, eight, ten. He does have the 8,000 game Pandora's box. Um, again, looking at how Retro Ralph is, he just did a video. Uh, Pandora's box now is looking into like the whole online e, not, I'm not going to say what esports, but I believe it's called an esports edition where basically it's online server based. According to Retro Ralph, servers suck, so it's not really worth getting that right now. Maybe it is in the future, but for right now, it kind of sucks. Don't even bother. Um, but it's your basics. There is a lot. Again, I normally do the 4500 game one. You can see here, it does say Pandora's 18S Pro Wi Fi RRTV. The one I usually use is Pandora's 18S Pro. That's all it is. There's no Wi Fi RRTV. Um, like I said, I do have from my company that I usually use on eBay. I do use it on eBay. I'm going to open theirs. I have yet to open it. Might as well open it on camera and we'll try to compare. Maybe it is the same exact one. And if it is, we might, I might not be able to do these two in ones anymore, but let's not jump the gun. Let's try to figure it out. Again, you do have 8,000 games on this. They actually did even send me now the company I use. They actually sent me an Excel sheet of the game list. I'm like, thank goodness. I have a ton of customers that ask me, what is a game list on this? And they, I finally got a game list. So that's, I, I'm so happy with that. Again, it has your classic Street Fighter team and team. All your basics are there. Again, that's why I'm putting this inside the comic book one. The comic book build is actually going to be very, I said in my video, I said in my briefing, but I haven't really talked too much about it. Um, they're very unique. They don't want 8,000 games visible to customers. They only want about five or six. And I was like, that's great. Cause he's like, Vic, honestly with the Pandora's box, if you look carefully, there's like 20 different renditions of Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. So he's like, Vic, I don't want my customers to get something like that. I don't want them to sit there and stare at it. So I was like, that's fine. He's going to basically remove games, actually really hide the games. You could hide games with the Pandora's box to make it easier. That's up to you. It's very simple. You just kind of press the settings button and all that. But you do have your TMNT. Easy, basic stuff. The other thing I did notice that this customer he did actually customize button input. So there is an option inside of Pandora's box that you could refine buttons. You could actually change them. Usually it's A, B, C, D, E, F, top three, bottom three. He swapped it to like D, C, A. It was like a whole jumbled thing. And I noticed that a couple of games that he played in the past is stuck on that button configuration. It's one of the Street Fighters I was playing. Um, all other games play fine, but like one or two of his Street Fighters that he played in the past in his re recent list, it was stuck to his like button coding. So out of 20 different Street Fighters, one of them is the buttons are a little wonky on it. But other than that, there's really not much you can do. I would never factory reset a Pandora's box because you do run the risk of flashing the SD card that's in it. And I don't want to do that. It's the customer's Pandora's box. I definitely don't want to do that. I wouldn't suggest refining or changing up the buttons or customizing them, but it is what it is. It's a-okay. TJ, don't stress it. You have all other Street Fighter renditions for it. Um, but it's also pretty cool. You could actually, from the suitcase thing that he had, it came with two Super Nintendo controllers. I do have these mapped on the Pi, and if he wants to put them to this, you could. You just plug it in on the USB, and now you're able to play some four-player TMNT if you want. So now, big thing basically, if you did look carefully while I was talking and I did that whole switch, I didn't actually turn off the switch to the Raspberry Pi. So you should hit the blue button, turn it off. The blue LED will turn off when you do that. And now the power button, the, the Raspberry Pi is, there's no power going to it. If you don't power it off, that's A-OK. -okay. Just remember that if you do bring power back, let's say, you, let's say you're done playing, you didn't turn off the Raspberry Pi button, you put this in the closet, the next thing you play it, when you do give power to the system, it will boot up the Raspberry Pi. And I always do suggest you must, you must turn off the Raspberry Pi. You must shut it down, I should say. You have to shut down the Raspberry Pi correctly. Just pulling the plug on it, you do risk SD cards being flashed. I get that a lot. So just keep that in mind. Worst case, if it does, I'll just resend you a card, so it's not that big of a deal. But just keep that in mind. Take a look real quick at the control panel. So again, I always love the LEDs. He gave me LEDs for like a TV. I didn't use them. I always get my LEDs on Amazon and then I basically run it. Always gotta give yourself a little bit of a loop here because when you do go down, 
you know, there is a flex. You don't want the LEDs to be crushed and all that. But all in all, solid wiring. There is a lot of wires. This to me is neat. Yes, this what you see right now. This is considered clean wiring. I'll raise up the camera. There you go. This is clean wiring. Again, you do technically have 12 wires right here. I got eight wires going to the joystick instead of four. Again, it's two encoders, six buttons or your regular buttons. So again, two wires going to each button, each joystick. You gotta keep that in mind, that is your wiring. Again, like I said in my videos, you take the family connector for the Pandora's box, you cut it, you gotta extend it. As you can see, you can see my player two. Well, the player two doesn't get extended. That's already a given, but I do have to put new heads on it, so it technically does get extended. Player one is the one that you definitely need longer wires for. Just keep that in mind. Again, I made a whole video on it. But as you can see, super clean wiring. You do have your extension cord here. All the power right here in the front because as you can see, as you can see, there's nothing here to bump into the power plug. Whereas if you see on Eugene's build, I had to perfectly align a power strip right in the middle because there was nothing in the middle here. But like I said, luckily with this bigger control panel, it's uh, more roomier. You do have a lot of play and a lot of room. And again, not to mention the height on this, it is perfect. You don't, these don't collide. Goes right on the edge here. As you can see, none of the power bricks are going over this kind of edging. So you don't have to worry about crushing anything and all that. And again, you do have your Pandora's box here. Again, super different than what I've usually seen. It's even got a nice case. The one that I get is just open air. There's a fan here. Again, this one had a heat sink. This one also has ethernet. It's got an ethernet connection. Very, very different. But again, the big thing was that no matter what, this switch that's on the actual Pandora's box would turn on and off the Pandora's box. Even if uh, usually like there's, there's pins here for a speaker and the switch that was on the original control panel, that switch only turned on the LED light that was there, the LED strip. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Trust me, it was, it was a whole thing. You could kind of see here, my jerry rig, it's right in the middle of it is where I spliced a bunch of wires and I got it connected to my button in the back. Easy, clean wiring as always, taped down, glued down. I use a lot of like hot glue now. There's your sensor for the LED strip. You will get obviously the controller for it. So you could put it as white, you could do a whole flash, you could do strobes, fade, and all that. Big thing though is the buttons are set to the red channel. Anytime it is red, you will get the buttons on. So if it's blue or green, you don't get the LED buttons on. But when it's red, you'll get it. That's why I usually set it to fade. Anytime it kind of fades and hits red, that's how you get kind of like that glowing in and out breathing effect. But basically you point your remote here. That's why the sensor is right in the rear here, right where there's an opening and you'll hit the sensor. You have your Raspberry Pi on the right, wiring nice and neat here. Again, I do have the two HDMI and USBs in the rear. Let me swap this real quick. Let's take out the HDMI. You can see in the rear again, you do have your dual HDMI and USB ports here with the nice cover. As always, simple, easy. These right here, they do have like, I think it's like three feet of wiring, three or six. So that's kind of where you see those big bundles. It's mostly because of that. But all in all, it is solid. And as you can see right now, basically again, the Pandora's box is on, but you can just pull the plug and you'll be set. Again, Raspberry Pi switch is off. If I turn it on, if I give the power right now, I won't, I won't do that because I'm going to wrap this. If I give power right now to this, the Pandora's box will, uh, the Raspberry Pi will turn on. I'm going to look at the editing on this and be like, oh crap. Yes, right now Raspberry Pi is on, right now Raspberry Pi is off. I wasn't planning to open up my Pandora's box, but since we're on the subject, I might as well do it real quick before we end the video. All right, so right now it didn't open. It's brand new again from the person I usually order from. I took the screws out of the base. Again, like I said, brand new. This is literally the one that's going into the, where's the power? <laughs> well, I could actually use this. Um, it's probably in the box though. So this again is gonna be the one that's going into the comic book shop. I haven't opened this yet, but if we open it, there you go. That is what I'm used to seeing. 
I always see this. I got an open fan case. Again, the one that TJ supplied me, it is different. It is very different, actually. I can even see from the pins here. He had only two wires going to an LED. I'm going to try to show you what I'm talking about with his specifically. But again, these are just awful joysticks, plastic. You can see everything plastic on this. Um, I'm going to basically remove the control panel for now. We're going to take the family board out. And we're gonna boot this, so let's put it in. Again, I, I've yet to boot this. Power switch already on, I'm gonna turn it off. And as you can see, power off, I'm trying to see here, everything now is off. Definitely the system is off, I'm gonna turn it on. We do have a red light here and a blue light. So again, I'm gonna show you what's happening with his Pandora's box. I have yet to power this on. Again, this company just sent me the 8000 game one. Let's put this in. I'm not gonna get any button controls, obviously. But let's see what we get. Definitely off the bat, that is a, like I said, you could see I've never had housing like he had. First initial boot while we wait. I'm just gonna see what it says here on the top right. Cause his was 18S Pro Wi-Fi RRTV. That's, that's what I'm used to right there. And I do have 800 pages at 10 games. This is 8,000 games. Again, Pandora's box 18S Pro. The one I get, it's a little bit different than his. And as you can see, when I do hit the power button, it turns off the Pandora's box completely. That's solid. I'm very excited. Again, I'm going to be putting two extra arcade sticks to this to make it four players. So that again is going to be for the comic book four player by Vic cabinet. And uh, yeah, awesome. Cool. We're going to turn this off. And then we're going to look at TJ's Pandora's box. Again, as you can just visually see, it is different than the one that I normally get. Not in a bad way. Again, I don't want to take it as, you know, it's a bad thing. Uh, again, customer supplied it. So I don't know where he got it from, but it plays. It's, it's a okay. I just personally feel a little bad. I feel a little bad because the power button that I put in, it's really deemed useless. But then again, he might, you know, it could always be transferred if he does get a different Pandora's box and all. So now real quick, I'm gonna bring back his. Uh, again, I wasn't even gonna mainly focus about this, but I just wanna make sure that TJ understands what happened. Um, I'm gonna put this on the Pandora's box. Yeah, let's see. I'm gonna show you right now. I have to turn off the LEDs here. Let me take you off the camera here. So now check it out real quick. You could see, see this green light? This green light is on. That means the Pandora's box is on, right? And right now, I do have power on. So if I take this off, you can even see my power went out, my light went out, but the green light isn't there anymore, but there is actually still a green light on the left side. You could even see, can you see the glow? You can. You see the ethernet glow is green? There's still power in this, and that is because of this here. Like I said, it's just, it's a whole different interface again with even with an ethernet jack so there's still technically power going and again the parent box is still technically on what i did it 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 worked as you could see it's basically like two chips and there's a, a wire talking to this chip basically like a four wires going i spliced those and that's what i figured i said hey i now don't have the green light if i turn the button on this side has power which is connected to the the sticks this is basically what it is right there. But again, with the, that off, it was just wonky. It was, it was very odd. So again, TJ, unfortunately, you just have to leave that button on. But you never know if you do swap out the Pandora's box for future proofing, which is pretty cool. You know, if you ever get a new Pandora's box, they all have this family connection. You just pop this out and put it in. That's all you got to do.